As a wise singer once said, you don't need dollar bills to have fun tonight. I don't know, my parents are out of town, so I was thinking about having like a party. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 money-saving tricks for students. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at some of the best tips, tricks, and strategies to manage your funds and minimize debt while you're still in school. Back to school to prove to dad that I'm not a fool. Number 10, apply for scholarships. I finally found out something that I can get from working hard besides just the good feeling of working hard, you know? <laughs> As the old adage goes, you don't know if you never try. Unless you're a straight-A student, with a long list of extracurriculars and volunteering to your name, scholarships and bursaries often feel like a lost cause. With so many eligible candidates, you'll surely get lost in the shuffle, right? Not necessarily. Robinson is going to go to someone who dazzles. There are many scholarships out there with a wide variety of specific focuses. Whether you're academically, artistically, or athletically inclined, or have a strangely specific talent, there's likely a scholarship out there for you. You need to really explain to us what makes you special. Also, make sure to look into local and regional scholarships, as they're often less well-publicized and can therefore be less competitive. Number nine, take advantage of student activities. So, are you interested? Sorry, it just, it's pretty lame. Oh, excuse me? Cultivating a social life can come with a hefty price tag in university. If you're in a city with a vibrant nightlife or a popular bar scene, then you might find yourself blowing through your budget way faster than you'd like. Thankfully, the many student groups on campus will have you covered. The various student associations, unions, and clubs typically organize a wide assortment of activities throughout the school year, from live music and movie screenings to parties and sporting events. It's a nice way to let off steam just to be somewhere on your own, or sometimes I bring a friend to show them you know, that you could be doing this as well. Typically, the price of this on-campus entertainment will run anywhere from free to extremely affordable. So why not stay in and mingle with your fellow students? Because they're exclusive and fun, and they lead to a better life. Number eight, do clothing swaps. No one wants to head out to campus events wearing the same old outfit. As much as we try to diminish the importance of appearances and emphasize personality over style, people enjoy looking good. And sometimes that means changing up your style. You're now part of a massive community of similarly aged and like-minded individuals. So why pay retail prices when you can shop among your peers? Clothing swaps have become an increasingly popular campus event, where students can mingle and get rid of the clothes they've grown tired of in exchange for something new, or at least new to them. I'm doing like college poses, like... I don't know if you are. You might just be doing... Hey, prof. Okay. That test was... Woo! Number seven, just stay in. I just wanna lay in my bed. Granted, this can't be your solution every night, but by entertaining yourself at home a few evenings a week, you can save big. In theory, it's not hard to stay in, but many people struggle to break free of the mentality that having fun only happens when you go out. Your home, be it an apartment, a room at your parents, or even a dorm room, can be plenty of fun if you change your relationship with the space. Binge watching Netflix or YouTube is an obvious choice, but that can get a little stale. Why not have a few friends over to play board games? Or if you feel like getting your party on, try some drinking games. But, um... Borrow! <laughs> Damn! Number six, borrow from the library. Having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. Internet on campus might be restricted, capped, or just plain slow. Though streaming may be the modern method of media consumption, when you're at university, you may find yourself needing to consider some outdated technology, like DVDs or Blu-rays. Scoff all you want, but there's something fun and nostalgic about picking up a DVD with friends and committing to it. Rather than going to the movies, hit up the campus library and peruse what's likely to be a sizable DVD collection. It's like living next to a video store, only free. Some libraries even carry board games, comics, and more. So shut off your laptop and get ready to embrace free entertainment. If you'd like to learn more about war, there's lots of books in your local library, many of them with cool, gory pictures. Number five, claim free furniture left behind. Found some candy in the couch. Love you, couch. Even if you're lucky enough to have a dorm stocked with furniture, it's unlikely to be a comfortable setup. 
Considering you'll be calling this place home, you'll want to make the space your own using fun furnishings with personality. Unfortunately, you'll probably be working with extremely limited room, some of which you might be sharing with strangers, so it doesn't make sense to invest in expensive furnishings. Plus, no one wants to lug old furniture home after graduation. So as tempting as it is, don't waste good money on new pieces. Here we go, pivot! <laughs> pivot! <laughs> pivot! Outgoing students tend to leave a lot of furniture behind, so try to stake your claim on things before they hit the curb, or take some time to browse free stuff on Craigslist. Pivot! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Number four, use your student discount. At Apple, a student ID or acceptance letter will get you $200 off your purchase. That school ID card you get comes with more perks than just getting through school security. As a student, you're part of a coveted demographic that businesses want to attract both locally and online by having special offers and student pricing. And while a 10 to 15% discount doesn't sound like a lot at first, spread out over the course of your undergrad and across the various businesses and services it applies to, that's going to amount to some serious savings. My prices are so small you can barely see them. Most places won't go out of their way to give you the discount though, so it's up to you to inquire about a possible price cut. Number three, make a budget. Essentially, student debt is like HPV. If you go to college, you're almost certainly going to get it. We know. You're sick of hearing it from your parents and older siblings, but it bears repeating. If you're going to get through university without acquiring crippling debt, you've got to set yourself a budget and stick to it. Even if you consider yourself to be a generally frugal person, spending without a plan can result in financial problems that you won't see coming until it's too late. A weekly bus pass costs £14.10. That's around £2 a day. We need more than I want to be spending, so I'm thinking of getting a bike. Thankfully, there are countless free resources online, designed specifically to help students create realistic functional budgets to keep their financial lives in order. Ask around. Your university may even offer free tools or workshops. Number two, pack a lunch and snacks. You've got a banana, you don't need no snack pack. You know I like snack pack, why can't you just give me a snack pack? I thought that was your snack pack. A big portion of that aforementioned budget is going to need to be allocated to food. If you lived at home until university, chances are you've never had to buy groceries for yourself. And the cost may come as a bit of a shock. But failing to get a handle on it early can ruin you. If, on the other hand, you make a meal plan and stick to it, then you can eat well without breaking the bank. There's one caveat, though. You have to avoid eating out. Buying food between classes can add up fast, so packing your meals and afternoon snacks is paramount to your success. Napoleon, give me some of your tots. No, go find your own. Come on, give me some of your tots. No, I'm freaking starved. I didn't get to eat anything today. <sighs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hey, guys, listen, I, I really don't want to be the bad guy, but, you know, it, it is quiet hours, and you really shouldn't be talking in the hall. I'm Broderick, and I am the coupon kid. My coupons weigh a total of 64 pounds. Number one, borrow textbooks instead of buying them. You can also rent many of the titles for the same semester for a discount and turn them in after finals. The textbook system in university may not be a scam, but it's not always money well spent either. Dropping hundreds of dollars a semester on books you might use for a few months doesn't seem right, especially when the bookstore buyback rates are typically low. Unlike sellback programs, book renting is guaranteed. You can't always sell them back, so that, that gets upsetting because you never know what to do with them because you can't use them anymore. Thankfully, your campus library is there for you. As long as you're willing to plan your study sessions early, it can be as simple as going to the library, pulling out the reserve copy of the textbook, and photocopying the pages you need for that week. Sure, it takes a little more time and organization, but it'll save you a fortune in the long run. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.